a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Did you know that bacteria talk to each other, sending chemical information to coordinate attacks? What if we could listen to what they were saying? Nanophysicist Fatma Alzara Alatrakchi invented a tool to spy on bacterial chatter and translate their secret communication into human language. Her work could pave the way for early diagnosis of disease, before we even get sick. You don't know them. You don't see them. But they're all ways around. Whispering, making secret plans, building armies with millions of soldiers. And when they decide to attack, they all attack at the same time. I'm talking about bacteria. <laughs> bacteria live in communities just like humans. They have families, they talk, and they plan their activities. And just like humans, they trick, deceive, and some might even cheat on each other. What if I tell you that we can listen to bacterial conversations and translate their confidential information to human language? And what if I tell you that translating bacterial conversations can save lives? I hold a PhD in nanophysics, and I've used nanotechnology to, to develop a real-time translation tool that can spy on bacterial communities and give us recordings of what bacteria are up to. Some bacteria are good for us, they help us digest food or produce antibiotics, and some bacteria are bad for us, they cause diseases and death. To coordinate all the functions bacteria have, they have to be able to organize, and they do that just like us humans, by communicating. But instead of using words, they use signaling molecules to communicate with each other. When bacteria are few, the signaling molecules just flow away, like the screams of a man alone in the desert. But when there are many bacteria, the signaling molecules accumulate, and the bacteria start sensing that they're not alone. They listen to each other. In this way, they keep track of how many they are and when they are many enough to initiate a new action. And when the signaling molecules have reached a certain threshold, all the bacteria sense at once that they need to act with the same action. So bacterial conversation consists of an initiative and a reaction, a production of a molecule and the response to it. In my research, I focused on spying on bacterial communities inside the human body. How does it work? We have a sample from a patient. It could be a blood or spit sample. We shoot electrons into the sample. The electrons will interact with any communication molecules present. And this interaction will give us information on the identity of the bacteria, the type of communication, and how much the bacteria are talking. Before I developed this translation, the translation tool, my first assumption was that bacteria would have a primitive language, like infants that haven't developed words and sentences yet. When they laugh, they're happy. When they cry, they're sad. Simple as that. But bacteria turned out to be nowhere as primitive as I thought they would be. A molecule is not just a molecule. It can mean different things depending on the context. Just like the crying of babies can mean different things. Sometimes the baby is hungry, sometimes it's wet, sometimes it's hurt or afraid. Parents know how to decode those cries. And to be a real translation tool, it had to be able to decode the signaling molecules and translate, the, the, and translate them depending on the context. What I can do is to detect bacterial conversations that lead to different collective behaviors. And what I did was to spy on bacterial communities inside the human body in patients at a hospital. I followed 62 patients in an experiment where I tested the patient samples for one particular infection without knowing the results of the traditional diagnostic test. The surprising result of the 62 patients I followed was that my device caught bacterial conversations in more than half of the patient samples that were diagnosed as negative by traditional methods. In other words, more than half of these patients went home thinking they were free from infection, although they actually carried dangerous bacteria. Inside these wrongly diagnosed patients, 
bacteria were coordinating a synchronized attack. They were whispering to each other. What I call whispering bacteria are bacteria that traditional methods cannot diagnose. So far, it's only the translation tool that can catch those whispers. I believe that the time frame in which bacteria are still whispering is a window of opportunity for targeted treatment. Now, in bacterial diagnostics, a sample is smeared out on a plate, and if the bacteria grow within five days, the patient is diagnosed as infected. My tool was still in the initial stage. I didn't even know if my method worked at all. Therefore, I had an agreement with the doctors not to tell them what my tool revealed in order not to compromise their treatment. So when I saw these results that weren't even validated, I didn't dare to tell because treating a patient without an actual infection also has negative consequences for the patient. Because unfortunately, this scenario happens very often. Patients get infected, the bacteria somehow don't show on the traditional diagnostic test, and suddenly the infection breaks out in the patient with severe symptoms. And at that point, it's already too late. Although it's still not known how doctors should treat patients during the whispering phase, this tool can help doctors keep a closer eye on patients in risk. It could help them confirm if a treatment had worked or not, and it could help answering simple questions: Is the patient infected, and what are the bacteria up to? Bacteria talk, they make secret plans, and they send confidential information to each other. But not only can we catch them whispering, we can all learn their secret language and become ourselves bacterial whisperers. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Aarhus, Midtjylland, Denmark. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Aarhus. Visit TED.com/TEDxShorts to listen to the full talk and learn more about TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.